Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Today we've got a great one for you. We're going to add some icon lists. We're going to create these with a fantastic Divi blur module. You see these on a lot of sites. I've got a little hover animation. So the little icon changes color. And if you want to, you can make them into live tell links and have that email client pop up when you click on the email if you want to. And of course you see these on other things, especially on squeeze pages, offering options on various services and things. And we've done exactly the same thing here. Really nice feature to have on your site, really easy to do as well. So let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder. OK, let's go down and I'll delete this section. Blue tab for a section and we'll start from scratch. Great. Well, I'm going to click on the section above here. I'm going to hit the little blue button. I'm going to add a new section. I'm going to use a regular section for mine today. Obviously have as many columns or a few as you like. I'm just going to use two for this today. I'm just going to build one list. And inside I'm going to use a blur module, which is one of my favorite modules. And we actually did a whole video just on the blur module because it's so versatile. So have a look at that if you want to. This is another in the series of Divis for Beginners and you can find the link to that playlist with all those videos down below here. Great. So we've got our little blur module in there. For me, I'm going to delete the tide. And we'll start off perhaps with an address. Let's say one, two, three, four. My town. Very sweet. One eight. As you can see, that's popped that down there. There's a big old placeholder for an image because the blurb you can have an image or an icon. And if we roll down just below here, you can either add an image. I don't want to do that today, but you can upload your own icons if you want to, if you've got some little images. But I'm going to use the onboard icons and there's plenty of them. They've teamed up with Font Awesome and there's a huge amount. If you don't know what you're looking for, you can either put a search term in here. I'm going to say globe as it's an address. Choose whatever's appropriate for you and there's plenty to choose from. As you can see that pops that in there. But you've also got the option you can scroll through. There's a little button here. If you're still not sure, let's clear out that search. You can hit the little breakout box and it'll give them all here and there's an awful lot to scroll through. So it's a good idea to have something in mind. I'm going to get that out of the way. Okay, well we've got the icon I want. I've got my little address there. I'm not going to link it to anything. I will when we do telephone numbers. We'll have that so that when they click on it, it'll prompt them to make a call or make the call if it's on a mobile phone. And I'm not going to change the background. So let's pop over to our design tab here. I want to put this on the left there. If we click on the image and icon here, I'm going to make it the default blue color that we've been using for the rest of the site. If we roll down just a little bit, a little bit image icon placement. I'm going to put mine on the left. That's fantastic. I want to take mine down a little bit in size. Obviously make yours however large or small you wish. I think I'll make mine 25 pixels. I just typed in 25 there and it put the pixels in for me. Great. Well, I don't want any round corners or border styles or anything like that. I'm pretty happy with the way that actually is. Now looking at it, that is actually quite central to my icon depending on how big your icon is or what text you use if we click the little paintbrush that's attached to the text here it'll take us straight to it and with all things divi you can choose whatever font you want just click on there they've got a huge amount to audition one just roll over it'll give you an example i'm going to leave mine on the default but if you need to you can reposition this up and down by using the line height down here if we go down a little bit We'll find body line height. Let's just roll that up a little bit more. If I take it up, you'll see that's dropping a little bit. If I take it down, it's going to raise it up a little bit. So put it wherever you want it, whether you want it to align the top, the bottom, or the middle. I kind of like the middle, which is pretty much where it was. With all things Divi, if you do something and you don't like it, delete it, it'll go back to the default for you. I think that's going to work for me. Great, well I'm not going to use any text shadow or anything like that. I find these sort of things work on much larger fonts. But again, that's subjective. It's entirely up to you. So I'm halfway happy with that. Let's just save this little change here. And in a while we'll give it a little hover effect. 
But what I want to do is actually decorate my background here. I'm going to make the background black because I like these lists to really stand out. And I quite often make them in my contact section next to my Google map or something or my email form. But with an icon list, the options are fairly endless. I'm just going to make this a simple black. As you can see, that stands out really nicely there. I'm going to change my text color, perhaps to white. That may be a little loud on a back, back, black background, but uh, I think it'll work for me. So I'm going to go back into my module here. Again, I'm going to hit the little paintbrush. If you don't want to hit the paintbrush, you can go over to design and you'll find body text right there. Exactly the same thing. I'm going to pop down, turn that white. That stands out pretty well. OK, the only other thing I want to do to this at the moment is when we hover over it, I want that icon to change color when they hover their mouse over it. Really easy to do, no coding involved at all. So let's actually go to the icon itself. I'm going to hit the little paintbrush. Or you can just go to design. It's the top one right there. This is common to all Divi modules. If we roll over the dark riding within one, you'll see some little icons appear. Go to the thing you want to affect. In my case is icon color here. If there's an arrow there, there is. Click on it. It'll give you two options and we can have completely different values for each of these. Desktops when the mouse is not on it, we'll have it that blue. When they put their mouse on it, the hover tab, click on the hover tab. Let's change it to orange. Whatever color you want, obviously. Now the time it takes to get from desktop to hover by default with Divi is 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick. I like to slow it down slightly for a bit of drama. And any time you want to do that, slow it down or speed it up. And again, this is common to all modules. If you go over to your advanced tab, you'll find transitions. Click on it. There's the default 300. Let's make it half a second, 500 milliseconds. Don't want any delay. I want it to happen as soon as they put their mouse on this module. Speed curve I like to use for my hover effects is ease in, ease out. You may not notice much of a difference in this particular case with these other ones here, but in certain situations, some will work better than others. My hover effect one usually is ease in, ease out. Great. So we should be happy with that. Now, of course, we want a, a whole load more, you know, telephone, fax, email, all that sort of thing. Uh, perhaps a second address line for mailing. So I don't want to have to go through all this again. And of course we don't have to. I'm going to hover over the one we just made. I'm going to click on the two squares to duplicate. Once you've duplicated it, it throws one identical down below. Now there's too much space for me between those. So I'm going to go into my original one, the top one, hit the little cog. I'm going to take a little bit of margin away from the bottom so that it'll tighten it up a bit. You'll always find margin over in the design tab and in spacing. And again, that's for all modules, rows and sections. Here's the margin. Here's the margin bottom. If I put a zero in there, you'll see that they're actually touching or pretty much. Now that's a bit much for me. What if we do 10? Still maybe a little tight. Let's try 15. But again, of course, this is up to you. And especially if we're going to link some of these things, you do want a bit of space so that they can actually tap or click on one without hitting the other. Great, so that works for me. I think I'll keep the 15. So now we can delete this one below because it's got the old margin setting in it. We want the new one. We'll just if I roll that back down. If we just hit that clone again, we've got the correct spacing there. And you can go into your next one. And whatever the next address line would be my city and maybe a state and a zip code and you can change that icon out perhaps to something a little bit different you'll find that just down below an image and icon again Let's use a map pin for this second part of the address perhaps I think that'll work next up you might want to put your email and we'll put a mail to link in here so again I'm going to clone it I'm going to go into my second one here, or the new one I should say. Put your email address. And we'll change out that icon also, which is just down below text, we know that. And email. Let's use a little at symbol will work for me. 
And remember, because we're cropping these, we've got our hover effect and everything working on there. Okay, well, let's make this a mail to link so it'll pop up. If they click on it, it'll pop up their default mail client. Now you can actually put it in the text if you want to, but I want it to pop up if they click anywhere. If you put it in the text, it's just going to pop up when they ask for me at my email.com. I want the whole thing. So I'm going to put it actually in the link down below. We're under content. You'll always find link under content. Don't want it just the title. I want the whole module. And we're going to use a mail to. So I'm going to say M I L T O, mail to, colon, and then put in the email address you want to put in there. I'm going to use that exact same one. So it's going to pop up with their email client and automatically fill out the send field there. Great. Well, I'm happy with that one. And perhaps we'll just put a telephone number and a fax number underneath. Again, I'm going to copy this one, or I should say clone or duplicate with the little squares there. We're going to go into our new one. We'll put in the phone number. I'm going to include the country code and then the number afterwards. I'm going to change out that little icon there. Let's find the phone. I think I'll use that one. And let's make this into a tell link that when they, they tap on it from a mobile phone, it will prompt them to call. If they tap on it from a computer, it'll prompt them to use something like Skype or something. So I'm going to say tell, T-E-L, colon. Then with the tell link, you want to make sure you put in the whole country code, area code, whatever it is, and the number with no gaps. Great. And finally, I think I might just like to add a fax. And again, I'm just going to duplicate Go into my new one. Fax numbers are usually just one digit different from your regular number. Well, they used to be anyway. But of course, put in whatever yours really is. These are all fictitious numbers here. Okay, icon down below. Let's try and search for a fax machine. I'm sure they've got something along those lines. There we go. Yeah, that's what I used before. That's great, but we want to make sure we just clone that number below. So we want to take that link out. Because if they click on the fax, it'll make a call for them. We really want to, them to put that number in their fax machine. So let's take that one away. Great. And that's looking fairly good to me. I think we're pretty much done here. And of course, the list I made over this side was exactly the same thing. I just used a check mark for everyone and did the same hover effect. And then the options on the side. So let's save this and make sure it's all going to work on the front end. Actually, before I save it, there's one thing. At the moment, this looks pretty good. Um, you may find, though, when you put a link in, that it changes the color. And it'll change it to whatever your default accent color is. You set it up in your customizer. If that happens and you want to change it to keep all white or all whatever color you have there, every module, if you go in there and go into the text or whatever it is you've linked there, at the top here, there's a little link icon. So you can make that link any color that you want. You can actually change the text and the whole style of it. But if you have a color change because of your default color, that's the way to get around it. Great. Well, let's save this now and take a look. Little purple button. Save changes. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there we have it. We've got our little icon list there. If I hover over, it's going to change that orange color. It's going to take half a second to do it. If I take my mouse off, it's going to go back. And the same with these other ones here. My email should be a link if I click on it. Brings up the default mail client here with the address already in there. And if you click on the telephone, it's going to prompt you to make a Skype call on a computer, on a mobile. That's going to call it for you. And obviously there's a fax number there. So there you go guys, that's how to create a little icon list with a fantastically versatile blurb module. I really do love that little module. And that's a great thing to have on your site. Like I say, I quite often build these next to the contact form for a lot of clients. So once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them below the video. I'll do my best to answer them for you. We'll make a little demo video like this one. 
I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's lots more coming. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.